So let's begin. Um, so we're Solomon, more specifically, me and Luis are part of Solomon USA. Uh, we have an office here in Los Angeles. Uh, and so the question we want to answer today is how can advancements in robotics help with automation? And we're gonna do this by introducing one of our AI 3D vision solutions, Solomon VGR. Uh, so Solomon VGR is one of the reasons we won um, Vision Systems Design Innovators Gold Award in 2019. And we're a recent recipient of Red, uh, Red Dot Winners Best of the Best Interface Design. So we just wanna begin with a slight overview of our company. So we have 50 years of experience. Uh, we are specifically part of the Vision Systems Unit, uh, but Solomon is made up of many different business units, uh, including robotics, automation, system integration. Uh, we're one of the top 200 technology companies in Taiwan. We have many branch offices, some of them in Asia, um, and we have about a year and a half ago now opened one here in Los Angeles, and we, are, we have one open now in Detroit as well. And so we wanna answer this question first, right? What's the bottleneck of robotic arms nowadays? Uh, so here's a line production facility where uh, some of you are very familiar with. Uh, we have one product, uh, batch production, uh, of many robots performing one very specific task. For that robot to perform that task, the work object has to be placed very, very precisely. So that requires a lot of fixtures. And so that, right, that's the robotic manufacturing of today, mass production, large lot sizes, uh, limited variety in product features. Uh, but in the future, we expect more customization, more highly variable product features, uh, and smaller lot sizes. So we expect to go from a line production to a small working cell with a lower amount of robots. And those robots uh, have to be able to react to changing working, working environments to, and to a changing uh, work object. So here we have two examples. On the left, we have a spot weld production. Uh, we have four robots, five welding guns. Of course, in this kind of production, our work object has to be fixed. Um, and it takes uh, 34.7 seconds, right? And each robot is doing a very specific task. On the right, we have one, uh, <clears throat> one working cell, uh, one robot uh, equipped with one optical scanner. So this robot is much more flexible. It can adjust uh, for its changing working environment. The workpiece can change and it can react to that as well. So we have just a quick summary of some of the hurdles that we face from uh, mass production nowadays, right? So manual teaching of parts takes a long time. It's time consuming, requires a technical engineer. Uh, workpiece positioning is probably one of the most important things. Uh, that requires a lot of fixtures. Uh, tolerances are quite high. Uh, fixture change out time is quite long, sometimes longer than production time. And uh, right, those fixtures degrade over time. So you eventually have to replace them, uh, increasing your cost. And so to solve some of these problems, we want to introduce Solomon VGR. Uh, this is a quick video of a simple car engine gluing hood application, right? Using a UR10, uh, you can see that our camera is right up here. And so what we can do is we can use our AI. Um, and what we can do is we can recognize the engine hood. You can see the robot path right there. And when this hood shifts, when it rotates, um, we can adjust the robot path accordingly. So there's actually no need to mechanically fix the position. So in a moment here, we're gonna rotate the engine hood. We're gonna take a scan. We only scan the center of the part. That's what we're most interested in. And based how that moves is how the entire car engine hood moves. And we can, uh, we can adjust the path accordingly. And so some of the benefits of Solomon VGR, we can auto recognize parts. And based on that recognition, we can load the appropriate robot paths. So this makes mixed model production possible. Becoming, production becomes much more flexible. Uh, there's no need for fixtures. So we save a lot of cost and storage space. And an important thing here is that if your part has a deformation, uh, we can actually react to that during production, which is quite difficult to do. Uh, so we just want to take a little bit of time to talk about how AI works. Uh, we have a scene here, which is just a, a street, an image of a street. And our, an AI has recognized many different objects, whether it be a person, a traffic light, a car. And right next to that classification has what, we, what I'm going to call a confidence score. So for example, this person, it's 99.6% sure that that's a person. So using these different tools, right, we can accomplish uh, various tasks. For example, this is a, a case that we've worked on uh, where we were given one weld line. This is gonna be for a weld inspection, uh, one straight weld line. But what we're gonna actually inspect is gonna be more along these lines, right? So the weld lines are a little more complicated. But even though we've only ever presented the AI a straight welding line in that image, we can still accurately detect welding lines, right? So you see that we can, uh, this is real-time AI recognition for this welding line with a high confidence score of 99%, sometimes even going to 100%. 
So that's where we like to focus at Solomon. We like to focus on the AI. So we like to be as hardware agnostic as possible. We can do, use many different vision uh, camera systems, whether that be 3D structured light, active stereo vision, laser line scanners. We're compatible with uh, pretty much all the leading robot brands and also uh, Rockwell, Mitsubishi, Siemens, and Omron PLCs. So whatever you prefer, whatever you, uh, whatever you prefer, your clients prefer, we can work with you uh, to accomplish any of these different applications. So this is just a sneak preview of our award-winning uh, user interface. So our user interface has many different uh, user permissions, right? We have administrator, administrator level control and operator level control. An administrator can assign user levels, set up permissions, an operator can start production and supervise production. And this is our UI, it's based on a flowchart. So what we have, we have a few blocks here. Uh, we have a capture block, a recognition block, a filters block and a display block. So it's quite easy to see the flow of your project. You're first gonna capture, you're gonna recognize, and you're gonna uh, pass that recognition through some filters and at the same time display the results. So there's no coding required. Uh, we quite literally just have to move blocks into the flowchart and attach them accordingly. And so these flowcharts uh, can be as complicated as we need them to be. So for example, here, uh, we have two capture blocks. So we're using two scanners. We have two robot script blocks. So we're using uh, two different types of robots, right? For this specific application. And so this is our recognition panel. Uh, as you can see, we have a few classes here. We have top, down, side, and side. And we've annotated this image. So this image, we have a few top and down classes. So this is how we teach our AI what we wanted to recognize. It's quite simple to do. Again, there's no coding required. It's all done within the software interface. And so these are gonna be Solomon VGR's four main functions. Uh, we are going to begin with edge detection. This is going to be to automatically generate paths. So we're gonna start with 2D, a two, some 2D examples of auto path generation. So in this case, uh, this is a, a plastic container and this is gonna be a plastic deburring operation. So you can see a lot of different points on this point cloud of this container. Um, all these points have been automatically generated by our AI. So there's actually no need to manually teach these points. And what we can do is we can use these points to create robot paths. So for example, here, we're gonna take a scan, we're gonna create those paths, and then we're gonna guide the robot along that path. So there's no need to manually teach at all. And another benefit of this is that there's no need for a fixture because every time that the uh, container shifts, or rotates, we're automatically generating the path each time anyways, right? So we can adjust for that every single time. So you can see here, we uh, rotate this container a little bit and we can adjust for that path. And again, guide the robot along that path. And so this is gonna be a uh, sole gluing application. Uh, this uh, shoe manufacturer has a lot of different sizes of shoe soles. It'd be quite a large time investment to have to manually teach every single one. But as you can see right here, we can actually automatically generate that path. Uh, so they don't need to manually teach any of them. Uh, they just present them to the scanner and our AI pretty much does all the work to, to teach the robot path. And again, there's no need for a fixture because we're creating it each time we can adjust. And so now uh, we can talk about a 3D application. Uh, this is going to be surface plasma treatment, again, for shoe soles. And as you can see here, um, the types of soles that we have, pretty much every single one is different. Uh, so it would be a different robot path every single time. So what we can do again is we can take a scan and we can generate 3D robot paths this time. So as you can see, the robot is, has different uh, rotations as it moves along the shoe. And each time it's actually different. Uh, so it works quite well for them. Uh, they can put any shoe under the scanner and we can generate a path. And there's no need for fixtures as well. So that's gonna be our, some of our edge detection cases. Uh, this is to automatically generate paths. We can avoid having to manually teach altogether. Moving on to 3D matching, uh, we can either use a CAD model or we can use what we call a golden sample, which is just a point cloud of our ideal part. This is gonna be to find deviations, perhaps to do some 3D inspection. So here we have a CAD model example. This is gonna be for a grinding operation on this bike frame. So as you can see, uh, what we're doing is we scanned this section of the bike frame and we're comparing it to a CAD model. And you can see all the different error values here. And if we zoom in, we can see where the error is highest. So that we have some uh, heightened surfaces here and right here. And this is a grinding operation. So what we can do is we can create normal vectors along these surfaces, these raised surfaces, and then we can create robot paths for the grinding operation. So we can create the robot paths uh, by checking through a CAD model. 
And so this is gonna be a golden sample example. So we don't have a CAD model here. So we, what we did is we took a, a point cloud scan of a ideal sample. And here we have a scan sample currently, right? This is gonna be for repair operation for an automotive part. What they're gonna to wanna to do is they're gonna to wanna to fill this hole with material. So what we can do is we can compare it to our golden sample, see where the errors are. So we have uh, quite a bit of error here, here, and a little bit in the edges. And what we can do is we can check the differences between both samples, both models, excuse me. And what's left over is gonna be what material needs to be filled. And so what we can do is we can get the length, width, and height of the surface and give you the volume requirement, the volume of the material required to fill it. So normally you, uh, you would probably overcompensate, input more material than you need and grind a few times, right? But using this method, it, it saves quite a lot of cycle time because we can also, if you do need to grind after we provide the volume, we can create normal vectors. And again, we can create robot paths for the grinding operation as well. And so that's gonna be some examples for 3D matching. Uh, moving on to vision guiding. guiding. Uh, this is to guide robots along created robot paths, whether that be using offline programming or manually, manually created paths. So we can talk first about using offline programming uh, software using a CAD model. So here we can see that we have our offline programming software right here. Uh, we have our CAD model of our part and here's our real part. So what we can do is um, generate the robot paths within the offline programming software and then once we scan the part using our camera and AI, we can adjust the, the CAD model within the software for real world object alignment. So you can see that we're about to scan and the position of the part is gonna change within our software here. So now it's aligned to the real life and we can adjust the robot path accordingly. And so if you don't happen to have a CAD model of your part, uh, we just need to manually teach positions or points once. And then every time we scan, our AI can adjust the positions, right? So here we have a, a carbon fiber drilling operation where we have about four to five different drill points. And so what we can do is every single time we scan, we adjust the positions of those drill points. So here we, we have, we raise the surface a little bit. We're gonna take a scan. And now you're gonna see that rotation right here in the drill position as well. So for this, this uh, bike manufacturer, they have a lot of different models of bike frames. Uh, so if they would use fixtures, the change out time actually is sometimes longer than production time. So this is saving them a lot of time uh, so they can produce more. This is gonna be another case. Uh, this is gonna be a car body gluing operation. Um, this car manufacturer has a, a few different models of cars, but only one of these fixtures, right? So every time they put a car in there, it's never exactly in the same position. It can vary. Uh, quite a bit actually, maybe up to 25 centimeters. So what we can do, um, our camera is right here within this metal box, is we can scan the gas cap of this car. So we're scanning the gas cap there. And what that gives us a is a lot of information. It gives us what type of car it is. So that loads up the appropriate robot paths. And it gives us how that whole car is shifted and rotated, right? So we can relay that information down to the UR robots and they can adjust their gluing path accordingly. So in this situation, we are, <clears throat> excuse me, we are controlling four UR robots, one, cam one scanner using one software system. So those are gonna be some examples of vision guiding. Um, it, fixtures are much less required, right? We can adjust every single time. Uh, moving on to 2D AI learning. Uh, we kind of split this up into two different sections, unsupervised and supervised. And this is gonna to be to find any flaws, any errors uh, for basically 2D inspection. So first we have an unsupervised example. So in this case, we can see an error right here that's been detected. Uh, we haven't actually specifically taught the AI what this error is. Uh, we've just given it just a general data set and it's just comparing and contrasting to find any differences. So this is gonna be a gluing uh, inspection. And what we're doing is we're guiding the robot with a 2D camera mounted on it around this gluing path. And every time we find an error, we pinpoint it. So we get the, co the coordinate data and we can relay that to the operator. So a few errors are detected there and we're just gonna go along the entire gluing path here. And so this is a case of supervised inspection. So in this case, we've actually taught it uh, all kinds of defects. Uh, here's some examples, you know, we have scratches, scuffs, bumps. And so what we're doing is we are guiding the robots at different patches along the surface taking a scan with our 2D camera. 
and we are checking for any defects. So we find some uh, in a moment here is going to detect a few different uh, defects like right here. We pinpoint where they are so we get their positioning and then we guide the robot to go uh, buff them out. So before they use Solomon VGR, they had a person manually pinpointing these different defects. And then later on, they would buff them out. But now we, it can all be done in, at one time using only one robot. And so those are uh, the four features of Solomon VGR, right? Uh, we are aiming for a fixtureless market where robots can adjust for their paths. They can react much better than they can currently. So using uh, Solomon VGR, we can perform a lot of different tasks in a lot of different kinds of applications, whether it be painting, plasma cutting, laser cutting, welding. Uh, so if you have any kind of, uh, you need any help in any of these applications, if you think we can help you, if you, you think we can provide any kind of value, please send us an inquiry. You can send all inquiries to inquiry at solomon-3d.com. Uh, thank you all very much for your time. Uh, Luis, if you have any questions, I think we can begin with the Q&A. Okay. Okay, there are seem to be no questions. Uh, Actually, the, the one just question just popped up. Okay. Um, will you let me know which vision you are using in 2D vision system? Sure. So the question was, will you let me know what vision we are using in the 2D vision system? So let me just scroll over there. Let's use, um, this is an example. So uh, we're actually using our own AI uh, detection system to detect these errors, right? So it's all embedded in one software system. So we're at the same time controlling the robot, pinpointing the points, and our AI is, is uh, con uh, controlling where the errors are. So this is a Solomon interface. We do this all through the software, and this is all included in, in our uh, Solomon VGR package. Generic vision is okay? Generic vision can be okay. I think we would need to uh, talk to you more about the communication methods and see how we can import, um, you know, different positions, how we can calibrate. Uh, but it's always an open discussion that you, we can have. So if you have any more questions, you, know, you can email us more specifics and we can answer your questions. Okay. Okay, if there are any more questions, uh, again, you can send inquiries to solomon dash inquiry at solomon-3d.com. Um, maybe Luis and myself can provide our emails in the chat room, and you can also email us, with, email us with any of your questions as well. So let me just do that now. Okay, uh, thank you all very much for joining us today. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.